Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That's So Po, and today I'm doing week 40 of my 2021 reads. This week I read three books which I did enjoy and I DNF'd three books. Uh, I can definitely tell that I'm still in a little bit of a slump just by how much I DNF'd, but let's go ahead and talk about what I read in DNF this week. Timestamps and content warnings are in the description box below. The first book that I read was Witch Hat Atelier Volume 1 by Kamame Shirahama, translated by Stephen Kohler. This is a manga series that I've heard quite a few different friends talk about, and I thought, you know, let me give this one a try, and it was just as sweet as everybody said. The basic premise of this story is that there is a world in which um, people are either born normal or they are born with magical ability. Um, but there's a normal little girl who really loves the idea of magic and really wishes that she could become a witch. And then one day, uh, a witch kind of teacher comes by and decides to bring her into his atelier um, and kind of bring her into the fold. And there's some mystery going on as well. This is such a beautifully illustrated manga. I really, really love the illustrations. They're just so, you know, gorgeous in the line work and in the, the kind of fantastical way that magic and outfits, lots of beautiful clothes are drawn. It's, it's a really gorgeously illustrated manga. Like, definitely worth picking up just for the artwork alone. The fantasy story itself, it, I really like this idea of the way that magic works in this world and um, there's a lot of mystery going on about what exactly um, made the teacher bring the little girl into his atelier and kind of everything like that. So loved that kind of thing too. This first volume does have a bit more info dumping than I would like though. Like there's quite a bit of explaining how the magic works and I don't really love that explicitly spelled out in that way I'd rather just kind of pick it up as we go along but that's okay um, and there are a little bit of kind of tropiness to some of the characters like um, when she's brought into this atelier there's some other girls there and one of them is like a mean girl so you know some of these are, are just a little bit too much of a tropey type of thing but I uh, very much love the artwork loved the world building so I'd be interested in continuing with this series I gave this first volume four out of five stars. Next, I read Leading Change by John P. Cotter. This is a business book that is all about how to create changes in organizations. It is a very well-regarded book and I can see why. It's got a lot of really good information and ideas about how to approach making lasting change. Um, it talks about you know how to break this down into a series of steps and why each step is important and what it's doing. Talks about a lot of things like getting um, stakeholder buy-in, building a team because you know you can't just do it on your own. Talks about how to set different goals to make sure that you have both short-term and long-term goals, how to deal with lots of interconnected pieces and how adjusting one thing may mean other things need to be adjusted. Lots of really great stuff in here. I especially liked um, the ending where it talks about how to uh, make sure that change is lasting, that it is kind of deep rooted in the organization. And I really liked the way that um, John Cotter talks about this, especially because he says, you know, you can't just come in and try to completely change the culture of a workplace um, or an organization. That what you actually need to do is first implement some very specific changes so that people can see how that works out and kind of believe in what you're doing. And then that creates culture change. And this reminded me a lot of How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram X. Kendi, where in that, Kendi talks about how a lot of the time people think that the way to end racism is through education, so basically like a culture change. And he argues, no, what we actually need to be doing is changing laws and changing systems. And then once you make those changes, you'll see that people realize like, oh, this works, these changes are good. And actually those fears that I had um, that were making me kind of racist are, are not founded and how it is now is fine. Um, and so I thought that was just so interesting to see 
that in a business book that I had just seen last year in uh, Kendi's work. Uh, and I just thought that was really, really well done. I, I liked this book and I think that if ever you're trying to make change in an organization, this is a good book to pick up. I do think though that it is a little bit overly long. A lot of nonfiction books, especially self-help books, I think tend to be kind of bloated. Um, just takes a lot more time to say uh, what they're trying to say than they need to. Lots of extended examples, things like that. Uh, but other than that, I thought this was a really worthwhile book. So I gave it four out of five stars. Next, I read Silver in the Wood by Emily Tesh. I buddy read this with a group of Goodreads friends, including Kristen at Kristen L. SFF Reader, who I will link below. Um, and this was such a sweet novella. So Emily Tesh is nominated for Best New Author for the Hugo, so I wanted to try to get to this. And I can see why this is such a beautiful little novella. It takes place maybe, like let's say late 1800s um, in the UK. And there is a guy, Henry Silver, who moves into a new manor house. Um, well, it's an old manor house, but he moves into there. And he is a, kind of a historian slash person who investigates the, the, the mythological, the folklore. Um, and he comes across in the woods, Tobias uh, Finch. And Tobias Finch is sort of mythical. He's magical. He is the protector of the woods and he's sort of uh, like a green man. He's sort of a wood being himself. And they kind of make friends, maybe fall in love, um, but there is some kind of darker magic as well that they have to deal with. And this is just such a sweet book. It's told from Tobias Finch's perspective as he is taking care of the woods and he's just this very um, kind of self-contained quiet man who's trying to do his best and just very very sweet so i loved the writing in this i loved the feel of it and the magic and it was just such such a gentle and sweet story i gave it five out of five stars then moving on to my dnfs starting with surprisingly Drowned Country by emily tesh so this is the sequel to silver in the wood which i had loved but I did not like this one. Um, so I actually got through a fair chunk of this. I got through 62% of this because I kept hoping that I would fall in love with it because I'd loved the previous one so much, but this one I just did not uh, get along with. So whereas Silver in the Wood is told from Tobias Finch's perspective, this one, Drowned Country, is told from Henry Silver's perspective. This is a couple of years later, and they are kind of investigating a along with Henry Silver's mom, um, like a, a vampire sighting that is in a seaside town. Um, and I think that, again, the writing itself is very nice and the atmosphere, um, the kind of feel of this creepy seaside town, all of that is, is really cool. But I really was not a fan of Henry Silver's um, kind of voice and perspective in this. So he is this character who's a little bit of a, a dandy, he's kind of foppish, and I just wasn't a fan of the way he described things and the way he talked about things. There's also just a bit of relationship drama and angst in this, and it really got to me. I'm not a fan of drama and angst, um, so I just, I just, was not interested in it so I kept trying and finally I just I gave up so love for the first one second one not so much another book I DNF this week that I was quite surprised to DNF was The World of Lore Wicked Mortals by Aaron Mankey so last year I had read uh, The World of Lore Monstrous Creatures and I'd given that five stars. I absolutely loved it. Um, I'd heard about this series from Andrea at Infinite Text, who did a whole video recommendation for this series. So I will link that below, definitely check it out. And so when I had read the Monstrous Creatures volume, it's like a trilogy, last year, I'd been so excited. I thought, oh, every year um, for the next three years, I'm gonna read one of these. So I picked up Wicked Mortals this year, not for me. So this is basically, um, I think, basically a, a novelization, not novelization, a, a written form of a podcast that Aaron Mankey does all about folklore. And I loved Monstrous Creatures because that was all about folklore surrounding things like vampires and werewolves and, and that sort of stuff. Um, and it just kind of 
dived into specific uh, lore and looked at historical records and news reports and all of these things about what people believed and maybe what kind of the source of that belief was, if there's any real world things that connect to these, um, how that lore changes over time or place. Just fascinating, really, really cool. So I picked up Wicked Mortals and I was expecting just this great read again, but what I failed to realize is that the subject matter is just slightly different in a way that doesn't work for me. So the writing was still fantastic, but what we basically have here is true crime. So whereas Monstrous Creatures was all about these, this folklore about these monsters, um, Wicked Mortals is, is about real people who did really awful things. So I read the first uh, chapter in this and it was all about this serial killer in Chicago who just did atrocious things and murdered so many people in such atrocious ways and I realized while the writing is still fantastic I I am not a fan of true crime I do not read true crime I don't like true crime TV none of that I don't like violence and gruesome things and and that kind of cruelty it's just upsetting so this is something where if you like true crime, you should totally pick this up. This is, I mean, I really do like Aaron Menke's writing style, um, but yeah, this is not for me. I'm still kind of on the fence of if I want to pick up the third one, which is about like mysterious places, something like that, because I'm a little bit worried that that might also just be about um, places where humans did really awful things. So if you have read that one, let me know if that's about people being awful or if it's just about more of the kind of weird lore that surrounds places. Uh, so yeah, not for me. Oh, and I, I got through only 4% of this. It was just that first chapter before I realized not for me and I put it down. And the last book that I DNF'd was Evening is the Whole Day by Preeta Samarasan. So this is a book that I was buddy reading with Freddy at Sluggish Reader, who I will link below. And again, I was super sad to DNF this because I love buddy reading with Freddy, um, but it was just not working out for me. So I got through 24% of this book, um, but even that was a real struggle. This is a... I guess you could say a historical fiction that is set in Malaysia following a, uh, a Tamil or Indian Malaysian family over a couple of generations. Um, and it is mainly taking place in the 1980s and something has happened in the family. Um, the grandmother has died and so there's quite a little bit of mystery unfolding about that in that everybody there knows what happens but the reader doesn't and it's we're given hints about it and then it's flashing back to some of the history of the different family members and the ancestors and things like that. Um, this has a lot of very interesting commentary on Malaysian culture and history, um, a lot about kind of that immigrant experience, a lot about Tamil uh, families as well. There were quite a few things because because um, Sush, my husband, is Tamil. There is like quite a bit of things I recognized in terms of things that the family was doing or eating or, or different um, habits, things like that. So that was really neat. I liked all of these things. But um, the main thing that was a problem with this book is that all of the characters are kind of awful. Everybody is deeply, deeply unhappy and cruel. Basically, everybody is pretty awful to everybody else. And so we're going through these years upon years of just uh, really toxic relationships and cruelty and abuse. And it is just laid out there for you. Um, it, it's just such a grim read. Uh, and Freddie and I were talking about this and there's this real feel too that the author has a lot of contempt for the characters and that everybody is shown in their worst light. Um, it, it, I just didn't feel empathy for anybody. At the same time, I felt empathy for them, but but not from the author's sake, if that makes sense. Um, but I almost felt sorry for them for the way that they were being treated by the book because it was just this brutal, harsh light um, on all of them. So that was just not for me. And the writing it style itself was just also not for me. It was very, very flowery, very um, kind of 
verbose and overly descriptive, so much so that sometimes it just felt like the style of the writing itself was taking up more page space than the story, if that makes sense. So it was just overdone for me. So this was not a book for me, um, even though I do think that the kind of cultural and historical things are, are quite interesting. Um, I, I was not a fan of just how cruel it was to its characters and, and the writing style didn't work for me. So I got through, yeah, I already said 24%. Okay, so that is everything that I read and DNF'd this week. I can really tell that I am still struggling with my reading. I am just still in a little bit of a slump where I'm totally happy to read, but if something isn't working for me, I'm pretty much just DNFing it right away. Um, and I'm just not in the mood to kind of challenge myself with more reading. So going forward for the rest of the year, I think I'm just gonna continue with my very gentle approach to my reading and my booktube making, which is reading and filming what I'm up to and not kind of pushing myself or challenging myself to do too much more than that. So um, I had said for September that I wasn't going to do any monthly priorities. I think I'm just not going to do any priorities for the rest of the year. Um, I'm also just adding a TBR onto things is just way more uh, kind of pressure than I want to deal with right now. Um, but I am still trying to read and there are a couple of readathons happening, that sort of thing, which I might try to read for even if I don't kind of efficiently make a TBR or participate or anything like that. So I hope that your reading is uh, going well and that you're just really enjoying whatever you're reading. I'm at least really enjoying the fall. Things have cooled down here and I am loving fall weather and also everything pumpkin spice. That's definitely, I'm one of those people. Um, so yeah, it's the, the season is really working for me, even if my reading is still a little bit iffy. But in any case, uh, if you guys have anything that you want to chat with me about, if you've read any of the books that I read, any thoughts, anything at all, just leave me a comment down below.